So if you've been looking for a sign to help you understand the power of design, I would like to make a suggestion that some of you probably don't want to hear, and that is that there's no such thing as artificial intelligence. I was at a talk a few years ago by a friend of mine, Brett McCall, on virtual reality, and he made the claim that all realities are virtual, and that really triggered me and upset me. Um, not because I didn't think it was true, because I thought it was messy and dangerous, and people could potentially paint a dangerous picture with this type of information. It, it kind of like, was like having my head removed from my body <laughs> and just like placed into a, a window. If you start to consider that this is all just a simulation, that can lead down a dark path of nihilism or thinking things really don't matter. And though this simulation is very convincing, we have evolved the most advanced user interface technology, uh, the human body. <laughs> so it may seem strange, but it is, we've got these virtual reality eyeballs implanted into our, into our skulls. We've got this like bag in our chest that I can push through these strings to laugh and cry and yell and scream, and it all seems very real. But we know through science is even helping us understand now that this design that we exist in, it's kind of like we're a fish in water. You know, we can't, we can't tell that the water is there because we exist within it. But this is all by design. And we can use this simulation to affect how we feel and that's what's really real, because sometimes life is just a punch in the face. And when that happens, it feels very convincing. It does, and it hurts. <laughs> so the fact that it may not technically be real, what we're experiencing, the feelings that we have are, as we kind of peek out through the looking glass here, into our own experience, through this biological interface that we've evolved, to be able to detect all of these sensory experiences, we have to remember this interface is largely a filter that keeps out the stuff that we don't need that would potentially keep us from surviving. So there's a lot more to reality. You know, there's horses playing accordions out on the street right now in downtown Asheville. <laughs> They are experiencing a different reality than ours right here. This is more like a creepy theme park, <laughs> based on our last presentation, no offense. <laughs> and I just want to say that despite all of this, uh, I've come to realize that you know, the true power of this design uh, lies within each and every of us. So although many of us go through life as robots, sort of autonomously reacting to the stimuli around us, we have within us the power to design our own realities. And we have within us the power to affect how we make each other feel and how we show up for each other. So we can argue about what's real and what's not, what's true, what's alive, what's dead, <laughs> where's my car? <laughs> but at the end of the day, the power of design enables us to imagine the reality that we want to create and then to take that imagination, put it into action, and make it real. Now, it may sound like some tinfoil hat stuff that I'm talking up here, some woo-woo craziness, and I'm happy to drink a beer and go down that rabbit hole with any of you. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we have to come back to where we are, you know, back inside this computer here, and I would just say all of these heads are data points into a grand computer that is a, a massive cosmic intelligence, and reality is fractal, and the first thing we do as we incarnate into these experiential bodies is we try and create more things like that, including our own technology. So you might say, yeah, whatever, but I'm telling you that the time is here to realize that if all realities are virtual, then all intelligences must be real or artificial. The, the, 
the binary separation is part of our nature of reality. Um, and it's a great time to put on your Santa hat, <laughs> put on your thinking cap, and just think about looking at things a little bit differently. Maybe the things that we're trying to think of is separate <laughs> from ourselves, like a comb. You know, it's really part of me. It's, and as I groom my shaggy armpit, <laughs> it somehow is a metaphor for this strange philosophy. <laughs> but let us not forget that humans don't have a monopoly on intelligence. There's billions of species on the planet that all possess intelligence, and yet we feel threatened that a computer might somehow approximate intelligence like ours as if we owned the right to intelligence. All of these technologies are just a stepping stone and a stairway for us to ascend and advance ourselves forward into the future, and we can choose by the power of design to make that a brighter future, or we could take things in a darker direction. And the reality is that polarity is a fundamental aspect of time. There will always be good and evil, there will always be push and pull, in and out, up and down, past and present, but we have the time that is given to us as our only true currency to enact the power of design today. <laughs>